I have done some heavy haulage once again. You see those two massive bags behind me. There is, by the way, I'm not sponsored by L'Oreal. I just realized the blatant product placement that's here. This is not intentional. They just happened to give these bags out for $2 and I needed bags, so. Anyway, that's not intentional, I just realized. And yeah, I bought a lot, a lot, a lot of fragrance. They had an online sale going on. They had a in-person sale like here in the Toronto area. Now it's done, like it just finished um, October 10th. Oh my God, why, why? Why do I do this to myself? I guess it's just fun. It's fun, the fragrance craze is real, you guys know. And so I'll show you guys everything that I got at the sale, plus a few other items that I acquired along the way throughout this month. Peppy's here next to me. You guys are probably gonna see him. He likes to make appearances. He loves the new bedspread, so he's here. He's my little filming buddy. Oh, hello, peeps. Let's rip into this bag first so that we don't have to look at the logo any longer. And let's start with the biggest item of all time, this hat box style looking situation that is a flower bomb gift set. It's even got the little, the little jingle bells, it's cute. Okay, they had a ton of these. This was well priced. And we've got our body lotion, we've got a 20 mil, a 10 mil, a 50 mil. Yeah, this was just over a hundred bucks, I believe. So it was like really worth it. Flower bomb, I told you guys before, I like the scent, but it's my mom's scent. Like I associate it with it being my mom's scent because she's fall in love with it like since it came out in 2005 like that's kind of been her thing and even though I haven't smelt it on her anytime recently I just kind of associated with being her scent and not mine but I think I'm gonna put that behind me because money talks and it was a good deal and I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna own back flower bomb because legitimately I really like how it smells I like all of the flankers my favorite one is the extreme which is discontinued so once my bottle runs out I think this is, this'll do. I don't think you guys really need me to get into how Flower Bomb smells, it's iconic. I'm sure you guys know of it. It's a very recognizable kind of floral, almost fruity patchouli scent, a fruit chuli as it were. So it's a good one. It's my favorite, like in that category, better than the Vieille Belle in my opinion. Anyways, massive gift set, got that, very happy. Then I got the Armani Code gift set. I don't know if I told you guys how much I actually love Armani Code. I never talk about it. It was a fragrance that I wore many years ago. My bottle ran out and I just never repurchased. I don't know, I think I just got sick of it for a while, but I do really like the scent. I have the satin, I have the cashmere, I have the Luna. So if you guys wanna see a full on like Armani Code comparison, let me know. But yeah, this set was pretty affordable too. I think it ended up being like 70 bucks or so it came with the shower gel and the lotion and i don't really care for these items i'm all about the actual perfume this one is a very very sexy smooth orange blossom jasmine and vanilla scent it's very sensual to me it smells very very sensual and warm and i just think it's super sexy i like it as an evening scent i like it as a going out scent like a nice going out for dinner or whatnot or even just hanging around the house but when i'm in that mood you know this one super sexy fragrance this is also very long lasting like on my skin it lasts a really long time so yeah, I'm happy to have a bottle in my collection again. I never felt the urge to repurchase because it's always readily available, but again, money talks, price was good, and I got it, and I'm super happy. On the topic of Armani, let's talk about a flop. I got the men's Armani Code Gold Absolute. This one was roughly $100, and it's the 100 mil. And this was a blind buy, and it was quite a fail. I thought it would be really good because it listed notes of iris, tonka bean, saffron, and I was like, oh my god, that sounds delightful, and I think that my man would love it. And it actually smells very, very synthetic, and um, it's just like, he's not gonna wear it. Um, he's become like super bougie with his fragrance taste, so yeah, this one, I don't even wanna spray it because I also didn't like how it smelled. It just kinda smelled a little cheap, so I think this one might be discontinued, but if you guys, Missed out, never got to smell it, not a big loss. Yeah. So that one, 
That one was a blind buy flop. Okay, let's get through all of the Armani's because then I also got Armani C Fiori, but this is a set for my friend Anna. You guys would have seen her in some previous videos on my channel. She wanted this because it smells very similar to Killian Love Don't Be Shy. I had mentioned it briefly on my channel before. I'm not gonna open her set, but I do have a sample. So I have the sample and I'll just I'll just spray it to tell you guys a little bit more about the scent. This is very much a plushy, like orangey, um, neroli scent on marshmallows. Like it smells like it's on a little bed of vanilla marshmallows. It's very pretty. It's not quite as sweet as Killian Love Don't Be Shy, but honestly, I strongly prefer this and I urge you guys instead of spending the big bucks on Killian Love Don't Be Shy, just go for this because it's a very quality smelling fragrance. It's discontinued, but it's still available. You can still find it. It smells very, very pretty. Very pretty. I really, for like this type of scent profile, I really like this one. It's not a scent profile for me, so it's not something that I would typically wear. I don't mind the smell and the price point of this is much more... Um, appropriate for that type of fragrance like I do think that Killian's love don't be shy is severely overpriced unpopular opinions and I know you guys are gonna come after me but it's how I feel then I also picked up the Armani C intense this is the older one in the black bottle I've been really trying with Armani C and I really want to like it because I really like the bottles like I think they're so beautiful and this one's quite nice. It's a little bit more patchouli heavy and less floral than the original. Honestly, I think I prefer the original because when I was at the sale, I got the lady to spray the original on my hand. They didn't have a tester of this. And I loved how it smelled. It had this beautiful intoxicating aroma about it. This one's a little bit more patchouli-esque, a little bit more, I think it's meant to be like a sensual, sexy night out fragrance. It's got a little bit more of like a, a spiciness to it. I do still really like this scent, but I kind of wish I bought the original because the original was just a little bit more lighthearted, a little bit more flirtatious and girly, and it had more of an intoxicating aroma where this one's a little bit more woody, serious, m mature, you know, a little bit more patchouli heavy. So it's still very nice and I like it, but I like the original better. And I like both the original and the intense better than the EDT. The EDT ended up decluttering. Um, it just wasn't for me. It was like a little bit too watery and it had a, an unpleasant black currant smell that was kind of giving me pee pee vibes. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. The intense is good. Um, just I kind of wish I got the original instead. And this one too was about a hundred bucks. So I'm not mad about the price. I mean, I spent a lot at the sale. I really spent a lot, but everything was like well priced considering the overall value, I think. Then I got YSL Mon Paris. You guys saw I just did a YSL video, like my whole YSL collection, and I told you guys that I was gonna get this, and then days later I went to the sale and I bought it. And I was like, I should have waited a couple days to film that YSL video because now I do have the Mon Paris. I love it. It's such a pretty flirtatious rose scent with patchouli, with fruits, like these nice berries. It's delightful. Like this one is delightful. It's uplifting. It has a level of sophistication about it. It does like the bottle does represent it really well. It's just addictive. I really like this one. I didn't think I liked it the very first time that I smelled it. In fact, I actually didn't. I smelled it at Sephora. I didn't like how it smelled. And then I kind of was like, ugh, Mon Paris is like lame. And I was wrong. It's actually such a pretty scent. I like this and I like the Entensement as well. It has a really yummy strawberry, like a like a fresh effervescent strawberry. It has that very subtle like Chypre vibe of the oak moss that's in the base. It's it's a nice modern Chypre that's very wearable. I really recommend this one. It comes out on the skin really nicely and it leaves a beautiful trail. I actually wore this a couple times and my man loves it on me. He's like, oh, that one that you're wearing smells really nice. And uh, honestly, like I was pretty surprised because I didn't know that he would like it. He's not like a big like berry lover, but he does like a dry, kind of a dry sophisticated scent. So this is the best of both worlds. And yeah, it came with a 90 mil and a 30 mil. I don't even remember how much I paid for this. I think it was probably around a hundred bucks. Anyway, very happy with that as well. Okay, then for my man, I picked up La Nuit de L'Homme. I haven't even unpackaged this yet. 
it obviously we all know it's the beautiful sexy cardamom fragrance with lavender it's like the ultimate sexy men's night fragrance i was never like crazy like i wasn't like gung-ho about it like everybody else was but i like it and it was priced really well i actually think it was like 60 bucks or something so i was like okay this is 100 mil and i'm gonna buy it so i actually i didn't even unpackage it until now because I know how it smells. I do really like this. This is a very easy wearing, like evening fragrance for men. It doesn't even have to be an evening fragrance. You can wear it on a daily basis as well. The cardamom note is beautiful. Is it overdone? Maybe a little bit, like a lot of people wear it, but it's still a good scent. And look, it's less overdone than Sauvage and it smells way better. So guys, I highly recommend this for the men. Ladies, get this for your husbands because it's a good one. It's actually a really good, like, come closer t type of cuddly scent. I really like how this smells. It's better than Armani Code. It's better than, like, a lot of the typical men's fragrances that are out there. Basically, what I'm trying to say is of the mainstream men's fragrances, this is one of the better ones. So, I love it. I'm happy that I finally have it. Even happier that it was such a steal. Then I got a backup bottle of Armani Code Satin. It was actually priced pretty well, so I got it back up. Um, will I need it? Maybe not. I still have plenty in my original bottle, but I know it's discontinued. I know it's hard to find. It's super expensive nowadays, so I'm going to hold on to it, and then I'll decide what to do with it. But anyway, got that. And then they threw in a nice little free nail polish with my like $1,000 purchase, so that's cool. Another men's fragrance that I picked up was... Pure Malt from Mugler. This one I know is discontinued, super hard to find, so I jumped on it. And my man actually really loved how it smelled. He said that the, the bottle was a disappointment because he didn't like the rubber and the presentation, but he loved how this smelled. This is a very manly, like whiskey scent. It's perfect for winter time. Like if you guys can find this fragrance and you're a manly man, this is for you. This is like a really sexy, boozy fragrance. It's got that Mugler like base, that almost patchouli-esque kind of bam in your face, sort of, it packs a punch. It has fruity notes in here as well listed, but it actually, it's not too fruity. It's more of a very rich, boozy, patchouli-esque musky men's fragrance. I really like the scent. It is like, it is really, really manly. This is like, I feel like this is like a lumberjack on a night out drinking whiskey at a bar. It smells really good. That is like my kind of man. So this, excellent, love it. And this one, I learned recently that L'Oreal apparently doesn't say that it was manufactured for CFG, but this one says, manufactured for CFG. I don't know if you guys can see that here, maybe now. Um, that apparently is like from the Clarins collection from when Mugler was owned by Clarins. So that's a good thing because I think that L'Oreal actually does butcher formulations. I, I don't know much about the men's line from Mugler and I don't know if this particular one was reformulated or not after L'Oreal bought it because I know it's discontinued now. So if you guys know, please comment down below. Let us all know. Educate us, please. Okay, next, another Mugler. We've got Mugler Cologne Run Free. I've been meaning to get a Mugler Cologne or a flanker of it for a while. And this one didn't disappoint. This one smells so good and fresh and clean and woody. It's like a, a woody laundry detergent. If there was a wood-based laundry detergent, it would be this. The notes that are listed here, there's only two notes and they're woody notes. It's just ginger and akigala wood listed for this, but it smells like there's some citrus in here as well. It smells very clean and the notes don't really represent it. it. There's a lot more in here than what they list. I feel like it's probably whatever the notes are in the original Mugler cologne, plus a sprinkle of these additional two. It smells so good. It's perfectly unisex. I would wear this. I would love to smell this on men. It's a very refreshing, different, clean 
beautiful like woody laundry scent. So yeah, that one was about 40 or 50 bucks, so that's excellent. Then we have a replica Maison Margiela, and we have some Atelier colognes. I did not know until I came into the sale that all of these brands are actually owned by L'Oreal because they wouldn't be at the L'Oreal warehouse sale if they weren't owned by L'Oreal. So that's great. Um, I mean, it is and it isn't, because like L'Oreal, I have a love-hate relationship with. We're not gonna get into that today. Let's talk about springtime in a park. This was a proper blind buy. Like I did not know what this smelled like. I opened it this morning and I sprayed it on the inside of my elbow. And the name is very accurate. This one was missing from my Maison Margiela shopping guide. I didn't have a bottle of it. And a lot of you guys had asked me and were like super bummed that I didn't have it. And you all came there apparently to see about springtime in a park while Hopefully you guys are still with me because I'll tell you guys what this smells like. It smells like springtime in a park. Just kidding. It actually smells like beautiful blossoms, maybe cherry blossoms or something like when you're walking. I totally get that vibe of where they're trying to place this fragrance as trees are blossoming and a new spring is here and you're just out and about enjoying it. That is what this smells like. There is a very distinct pear note. I love this pear, it's very refreshing. It's clean, it's a very clean floral scent. There's Lily of the Valley, but I feel like there's more than what's listed because I think that the only notes that are listed are pear, Lily of the Valley, and musk. It's a nice clean musk, it's definitely there. It'll, it's almost like a nice floral shampoo. It's a very refreshing, very feminine, gentle scent. It is very like delicate, very gentle, like like the blossom of like a blossoming tree, like a pear blossom or a cherry blossom, that like delicate little flower. That's very much what this reminds me of. Like that's very much what the scent is projecting. It's lovely. It's very, very lovely. It is for a floral lover. Like this is, is a floral fragrance. Essentially it's a floral fragrance. A delicate, slightly fruity, musky floral fragrance. I think it's really lovely, but I would not be wearing this in the cooler weather in the fall. Like right now, this just isn't the vibe for me. I want something a little bit more spicier, a little bit more cozy, and it doesn't suit the season, but for spring, this would be perfection. Especially for those of you guys who enjoy a pear note, this is very very pear like a pear blossom it's it's so pretty that one too was about a hundred bucks so i think that's pretty good for maison margella because they like retail for like 168 or something i'm talking canadian dollars and then we got a couple from atelier cologne so we'll talk about citron durable this one is this one took me by surprise this is basically maple maple citrus and I thought that it would be more sappy. I thought it would be more like, I mean like more like maple syrupy, but it has, it has maple sap as a note. It has lemon. Okay, right now I'm just smelling the leather sleeve. So it has maple sap, it has lemon and sequoia, cedar. So lots of tree, lots of tree notes. And for those of you guys who are not fellow Canadians and not maple syrup connoisseurs, I will give you a quick lesson. Maple sap, for those of you guys who don't know, is the liquid that trickles out of the tree into which they make maple syrup. So it's liquidy, like you can basically drink it, it's less dense, and this is maple sap. This is not syrupy, heavy, like oozy sweetness. No, this is kind of, light, almost drinkable. It smells delightful. I love this. It, this is the perfect fall scent. Like this is what I want fall to smell like. I wish that autumn vibes that came out from Maison Margiela smelled more like this. I wanted maple. I wanted something delicious. You know, Th this is it. This is like, this is like delicious lemony maple tea almost. A little bit woody, very aromatic, really, really lovely, lovely scent. I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy it 
because it was a 30 mil, it was like 60 bucks. And I was like, okay, like that's a little steep considering it's a warehouse sale, but whatever. I'm actually super happy with it. I think it's a really, really nice fall scent. I did wear it the other day. Performance is not ideal, but I think none of the Atelier colognes really perform. It was only about three, four hours. So yeah, that part's the bummer, but otherwise really, really nice scent. And I never heard anyone talk about that. Like I've never heard anyone talk about that fragrance. So I, did, I actually thought it was new or super old and discontinued, but looks like it's kind of still readily available. Like I searched it online and I can still find it. And then I got uh, Ombre Nu. So this, this one, before I bought it, I checked for Grantica and I saw that it was compared to my beloved Fendi Theorema, which you guys know that I'm obsessed with. And it does, it does smell like that. It's got this candied orange scent, this beautiful spiciness, like peppery kick, amber. It's super cozy as well. This is another great scent for the cooler weather. So those are my two that I'm gonna be wearing for the cooler weather, like the uh, Citron Durable is a little bit more like uplifting, zingy, more of a morning scent. And this one I think is more of a like afternoon, evening scent. A little bit more cozy, winding down, like it really develops too. When I first spray it, I don't get the comparison to Fendi Theorema, but when I wore it on the skin, it does. It does develop into something very, very similar. So I'm quite happy with this. I need to explore more Atelier Cologne fragrances because even though their performance is not the strongest, they have some really creative blends. And yeah, the, the 100 mils of the Atelier Colognes at that sale were about $110, so also very well priced, I think. Like I think Fragrance Buy has it for probably about close to the same price, but anyway, I was already there and I was in the mood to shop. This is like, this is a really lengthy haul. I'm realizing because I have one whole bag left of stuff, not from the sale, just other stuff that I got, and like a couple other items, and yeah, I think you guys, I think you guys need some refreshments. Go get yourself some refreshments. I'm gonna have a little bit of my cherry bubbly. Cherry bubbly is my favorite bubbly. I don't know why I like the cherry flavor so much, but it's the best one for me. Let's do a quick intermission. Let's do a quick intermission. Um, I wanna share a couple other things with you guys. I went to Yorkdale, which is like one of our local shopping centers. And I don't know if I've been like living under a rock for I guess the last couple years or maybe more, but okay, so they have Nordstrom there. And did you guys know that you can make your own samples at Nordstrom? Like you're literally, you can go like have your way with them. Go smell all the fragrances. They equip you with everything you need to make samples. So they give you the little decant, whatever things. Th this is separate from the base. The little sprayer is separate from the base. You go, you take the bottle, you spray it in there, you pop the lid on, and then they give you little cards for you to label what the fragrance is. And nobody bothers you. N you can just like go do whatever. The only one they said that you're not allowed to spray is the Parfums de Marly. You're not allowed to do decants of that. But literally everything else, I'm like, oh my God, like. I'm like, I feel like a kid in a candy store that's stealing. Like it was bizarre, but yeah, you can go and make your own samples. So I don't know if this is at every Nordstrom, but definitely the one at Yorkdale, you can go make your own samples. So yeah, I got uh, Armani's Blue Lazuli, which I had a sample before and I really liked it. So I got another sample. I got by Rito's Cellier, which is from their expensive collection, which in the opening smells like a really nice leather, but in the dry down smells dilly like Santal 33. So I wasn't a fan. I got the new Armani Cypress one. This one's really nice from their Privé collection. I got by Rito Slow Dance, which I still need to play with. It's quite spicy and unusual. And then I got the Armani Privé's Cuillère Noir, which is a really nice leather scent. I'm feeling the leather vibe. The closer we get to winter, the more I crave leather. I'm a leather person. So now I have very fancy samples to play with. So I did that. And then I don't know if you guys can see my lashes, but I got these magnetic lashes on Amazon. I got these ones. This is not sponsored. I just, I had to stop doing lash extensions because I started to get a really bad allergic reaction. Like my eyes got so puffy. Like literally I looked like I got like a bee sting all over one eye. Like I woke up one morning and it was like half closed. 
it was horrible. It was so itchy. It was flaky. And then it turns out that you can develop an allergic reaction to the glue. It's the cyanoacrylate that's in the lash glue that gives people the allergic reaction, which is basically super glue. So lash glue, as I now learned, is basically super glue, which isn't the greatest to be putting, I guess, on your eyes to begin with. So that's why people do develop allergic reactions. So yeah, like the last two times that I went, it got progressively worse and I was like, no more lash extensions for me ever, but I want to do my lashes sometimes, especially when I film or if I'm going out. So I got these magnetic ones and they had horrible reviews on Amazon, like absolutely horrible reviews. But I was like, you know what? I think I can figure it out. So, okay, look, not bad, huh? Like there's a little magnet here and then there's a little magnet here and there's a top and a bottom lash and it clicks into place. Like I had to tilt my head back a little bit, place it. Look, if you guys are interested, I can do like a little tutorial on how I did it. Maybe I'll just do an Instagram story. I'm fascinated because I hate using glue. Like glue is so messy. I'm so bad at it. And then I don't like that it gets on your actual lashes. But this is magnetic and they were like 12 bucks. So I was really happy with that Amazon purchase. It only took me like two or three tries to get it right. And it's good. It's good. So yeah, that's my quick little intermission of other things that I wanted to share beyond fragrances. And uh, we'll get we'll get back into the fragrances. Intermission over. So we got Banana Republic Pure White. My friend picked this up for me from the Banana Republic outlet. This is a very clean scent, and it's very reminiscent of Byredo's Bal d'Afrique, but it has less of the vetiver. It doesn't have quite a distinct scent as Bal d'Afrique does. This one is more laundry esque, clean. Very easy to wear, very pretty. It has a little bit of that lotion-y sweetness that Baldefric has. Very, very nice. Definitely reminiscent. I would say it's about 70% similar to Baldefric. Like, you do get the... Uh, it does pop into your mind. Like, the, the reminder of Baldefric is definitely there. And it is so affordable. Like, I think it was, like, at 40 bucks. And they have the bigger bottles now. They changed their packaging. I don't like the new packaging as much as I like the old packaging. But I do like that there's more volume in here. Like, the old bottles were only 75 mil. But these are 100 mil. So that's great. It's definitely a lot more citrusy. It has a little bit of a tea note. It's, like, a clean, musky scent. There is there is a subtle a subtle sweet vetiver in there. But it's not quite as vetivery as... Bal Freak. Anyway, really great fragrance, really good value. Like, will I call it a dupe? Maybe not quite a dupe, but definitely somewhat of a smell alike. So I really like that one. And like on casual days that I don't want to waste my Bal Freak, I will wear the pure white because it still gives you the similar effect. It still gives me that like uplifting, happy vibe, but without me having to, you know, use the fancy fragrance. Okay, then the rest of the stuff I got in PR. These like beautifully packaged fragrances were sent to me and I wanna show you guys what they are. It's from a new niche house that I'm discovering and it's called Maison Maisa. This is really lovely packaging. So I'm just gonna get through them really quickly with you guys cause I did kind of spray all of them and I have thoughts. There is one that really stood out to me and I'll tell you which one that one is. And then I'll tell you what the rest of them smell like. They sent me so much stuff. Like I've never received so much stuff. So I am so thankful. But at the same time, I have to be honest with you guys because like I I can't be I can't be swayed that way. So the one that really stood out to me, the only one that really stood out to me was the protocol. Or protocol. I don't love the packaging. I'm telling you guys right now. Not a fan of the packaging at all. Also, when I opened this, it smelled like a very old school rosy scent. And I was like, hmm, is this what this is? Because like, I didn't like the way that it smells in the packaging. But the way that this wears on the skin is completely different than the way that it smells in the packaging. And by the way, this is like a special edition bottle. The proper bottles are this. So I much prefer the original bottle. I feel like they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have steered away from this. This is, this is good. This is not ideal. So the dominant note here, I do feel like it's rose and it's a bit of a soapy rose, but it also has a lot of interesting supporting notes. Like there's some saltiness, there is some like aquatic facets. It's very, very interesting. Patchouli, musk, amber, those typical base notes. 
and Ambroxan. And this brand, they have a lot of Ambroxan in their fragrances and I am very, very sensitive to Ambroxan. It smells very sharp to me and it can sometimes ruin a fragrance. So this one has the least Ambroxan and this one I, I actually quite like it. It smells really nice, delicate, feminine, slightly soapy rose with aquatic facets. Really lovely fragrance. I will be wearing this one and I think it's super beautiful. Um, the scent is super beautiful. The packaging is not, not my favorite. And their little gift sets, they gave you like a little soap, a little mini bottle of the perfume. So these are like supposed to be super bougie, but I'm picky that way. Then we have Jardin d'Assai, which as well, normal bottle is like this. So I, I much prefer the normal bottles, but this one is like, this one's very fruity. It almost like smells tutti fruity, but it has this kind of sharpness, like, like Herba Pura. It has a similar effect to that. So this one's nice, but the dry down still has that sharpness. I love it in the opening. I love that fruitiness. It's very refreshing. It's bright. It's different, but I get the sharpness in the dry down, which I don't love. Then there's the Rue de la Soie, which is a really nice bergamot dominant scent. Like this one is very, very bergamot dominant, but it has this sharpness. This one's very masculine. I can't get past the sharpness. So this one, I was a little bit disappointed. The bergamot is nice, if not for that sharpness. Then there's the Vest 1981. This one's a very patchouli, mossy citrus scent. Also very masculine. This would be like a nice men's fragrance, a nice fresh kind of bitter citrusy patchouli fragrance, but I, it's not something that I can wear, but this is a really nice men's scent. But uh, yeah, you have to like fresh patchouli. So if you're looking for a new niche fragrance to get your nose on and you like a heavy patchouli scent, but something fresh, then The Vest is good. Then I also got Voyage Nocturne. And this one has some nice raspberry caramel facets. It smells like a like it could be a really good fragrance, but again, I get that sharp dry down. I wish I didn't get that Ambroxan in the dry down. It starts off beautiful, like they start off so beautiful. So I think for those people who are not sensitive to Ambroxan, this would be a really great niche brand to check out because the longevity on these fragrances is killer. Like they last all day and into the next day. I have to give them credit where credit is due. They are extremely long lasting, but I, um, I just can't with that with that harsh Ambroxan. They also have body sprays, which are super long lasting as well. The thing that I actually really love from them though is the room sprays. The room sprays are my favorite. The vanilla one I've been spraying nonstop. This is like, it's just Madagascar vanilla. I don't even like vanilla, but I've literally been obsessed with this one. It smells so good. It smells like a fresh, clean, laundry-esque, beautiful, natural vanilla. I'm obsessed with the room sprays. I'm like all about the room sprays. That one's really nice for like fall, winter, which is where we're at now. And then they have this other one. It's a Cedra de Corse. So like Corsica Cedar. This one's a nice aquatic one. This honestly could like even be used as like a men's, a men's body mist. Like you could fully use this as a men's body mist. It has a really nice aquatic woodiness to it and i don't think that these have ambroxan in them because i don't get that sharpness from the room sprays so like i'm tempted to use the room sprays as body sprays because they are fantastic so that is a new niche house that i've been discovering plus all of these fragrances that i bought at that l'oreal warehouse sale i've just been like out of control and basically broke now so that's fun. Um, let me know what you guys have been hauling. Is there any sweet deals that you guys have found? Any warehouse sales that you want to tell me about? Comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this haul. And if you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.